It's been nearly six months since the first coronavirus cases were confirmed in the United States. And as lockdowns lift and states reopen, there are many questions on our minds about what's safe and what isn't. So we asked an epidemiologist from Harvard, why not, to break it down for us. What have we learned works best in controlling the virus? It's really clear that if we can reduce people's contacts with one another uh, drastically, that does bring down the spread of the virus and in fact brings down the number of cases. So I think of the, the social distancing and lockdown measures as kind of the large scale cleanup and then the more targeted measures like contact tracing as ways of uh, cleaning up what the little bit of mess that's left. And we know that certain kinds of contacts are much more worrisome than others, those in confined settings with poor ventilation and with large numbers of people uh, are the ones that lead to large scale outbreaks. And so those are clearly the most dangerous kinds of contacts and the ones that we wanna prevent for the longest possible time. What would happen if everyone in the US immediately started wearing masks? It would help a lot. I don't think we know yet exactly how much it would help, but it would reduce the opportunities for viral spread. I think one reason why some of the Northeast has been relatively successful in bringing numbers down is that compliance with masks, at least anecdotally, seems to be relatively high. I, I think the mask also plays a role as a sort of symbol of we are not in a normal time. We need to be careful. It reminds people to stay at a distance. It, it helps us to do all the other things that we need to do. How much safer, in your view, are outdoor gatherings than indoor ones? I think the evidence is accumulating that they're considerably safer. There's a lot of, again, relatively anecdotal evidence that being outside is not where transmission happens. And mainly in the sense that we've had repeated outbreaks in confined indoor spaces and not really traceable outbreaks that have happened from outdoor gatherings. It's not that there's been no transmission, but the real bad scenes are in prisons and meatpacking plants and bars. What's the safest way to visit older or at-risk families? That is a great question, and there's a lot of effort to try to figure that out. Where possible, doing it outdoors is good. Obviously, wearing masks in, on both sides and at some distance. So it's like any other activity, except that the stakes are often higher for a, an elderly relative. But, but I think that's, a, again, social interaction, especially with people who may be otherwise fairly socially isolated, is an important human activity, so we shouldn't avoid it altogether uh, in the same way that we can avoid certain types of social activity. We should find a way to do it uh, and we should find a way to do it as safely as possible. What do we know about viral transmission among children? Transmission amongst children seems to be relatively rare. In most countries that have had schools open, there have been relatively few documented cases of transmission. In most household and other studies of transmission among children, they seem to be, especially young children under 10 or 12, somewhat less likely to get infected and considerably less likely to transmit onward. Is there any light at the end of this tunnel? I think it takes really one of two forms. I mean, in the absence of continued distancing, which nobody enjoys and which is very hard on a lot of people's lives, I think the two choices are we find a really good way to treat this infection, and in particular, way to keep it from getting severe rather than a way to treat it once it is severe. So we have now one or two okay drugs that are certainly better than nothing for very severe cases, but what we don't yet have is a way to treat people the way we do with, say, flu, who have a mild illness uh, and try to resolve that infection quickly, hopefully prevent it from getting severe. That would be one. And the other would be a, an effective vaccine that can be deployed on a large scale and provides long-term immunity. Treatments might be sooner to come than a really effective vaccine, but hopefully that's wrong and hopefully an effective vaccine will arise in this first round of tests. I think it's uncertain, but hopeful. That's kind of depressing. Can you end on a lighter note? You know the joke about the epidemiologist and the ICU doctor walk into a bar? I do not. Just kidding, they wouldn't do that, it's unsafe. I feel worse, not better.